everyone, and welcome to God's Plan, Your Part, a podcast where our goal is to read the entire Bible in a year, seeking to understand God's plan of redemption while discovering daily and practically your part in it. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are looking at Jeremiah 38 to 40, as well as Psalm 74 and 79. So as always, we encourage you to go read for yourself those chapters, uh, kind of ask the Holy Spirit what he's revealing to you through those Or you can stick around and listen to us do the reading afterwards, listen to us stumble through all these names that are a little bit tricky. I hate them. And it's like so not necessary to actually say it because it's like this person, son of this person, and that person, like it's literally a list of names of these people (laughs) that you can't even say, and they don't even need to be mentioned. So Jenny has strong opinions. I get so frustrated when I'm reading About the names. Because it's like, oh man, here come the Babylonian names. I don't know how to say any of those. So, this is interesting. Poor Jeremiah, he's having a pretty tough time. Uh, He gets thrown into a cistern, and not only does he get thrown into a cistern, he sinks into the mud in the bottom of the cistern. Uh, Then it feels like whiplash. They immediately decide to pull him out of the cistern. Uh, He has a secret conversation with Zedekiah about what is going to happen. Zedekiah is told he can either surrender to the Babylonians and live, or fight the Babylonians and be judged. Uh, And then we find basically Jerusalem after the Babylonians have carried every single person off. So this is, I guess, like a pretty pivotal couple of chapters. Uh, There's a lot happening in the narrative, and it's significant. I feel like Jeremiah at this point, because he's thrown into this cistern, it's probably just like, oh, here we go again. Just like the bully at school, it feels like. Um, so he's already in this place of just like this constant, they don't want to hear what I have to say. Of course, they're going to throw me into a cistern. However, I bet there's conflicting thoughts in his mind because chapter 39, everything comes to fruition. Everything that he said is going to happen actually happens to the point of we actually hear about Zedekiah, like watching his sons die in front of him. His eyes are like taken out of his head, like this crazy, awful um, destruction that Jeremiah was talking about. Not that I don't, I don't know that he would be happy because I think he's ultimately sad for the people of God too. Yeah. Um, but like maybe a little bit like, guys, I told you this was going to happen. So like maybe just a little, I don't even know, not a glimmer of hope, but like, Hey, the Lord is going to do what he said and I'm not crazy. Um, but yeah, it's interesting how that kind of plays out within those two chapters. I'm sure there's very conflicting thoughts in Jeremiah's heart. Because I know if it was me, I'd be like, you guys are so dumb. I said it so many times. Actually, I feel like I say that maybe not the dumb part, but I say that a lot during the day. I told you. <laughs> We've been talking about how people assume that Jeremiah was a spy. Read over these chapters and tell me that Jeremiah does not seem like a spy. Oh, um, my word. Basically, he's, he's telling all the people they should surrender to the Babylonians. So like they're being sieged and Jeremiah's like, Hey, you should surrender. He's telling the King, he should surrender. Uh, When the Babylonians enter the city and start to basically dismantle the city, Nebuchadnezzar issues a decree that Jeremiah should be protected and saved. Um, Mm -hmm. Jeremiah somehow accidentally ends up being chained up and carried off. And they actually stop the procession so that they can release only Jeremiah. Yikes. I bet everybody's like giving him the evil all like. So I don't know that we can eye. totally fault all these people that were like, I think he's a spy. Because when he gets released from chains while everyone else stays bound and headed to Babylon, it's like, mm-hmm. uh-huh, I knew it. Um, so this is, this is an instance of Jeremiah is faithful to God. And because he's faithful to God, um, basically the opposite of what's happening to everybody else is happening to him. Um, And I think there's a little part in here too, isn't there about um, somebody like some people were being left. Yeah. So basically what happened is the Babylonians took all the rich and affluent and, you know, important people. They took them to Babylon as captives because they want them to serve in the court of Babylon. That's how Daniel ends up there. Mm -hmm. You know, Daniel, that's how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego end up up there. Um, They leave behind kind of sort of two groups, the extremely poor people who have nothing to offer to the empire. They stay behind. And the people who listened to Jeremiah and fled the city. uh, I I mean, I guess it could be people that listened and also people who were just afraid. Um, the people who fled for their lives, they return. So there, there is this very, very small remnant uh, remaining in 
Jerusalem and the area around Judea under the command and leadership of this Gedaliah. And Gedaliah, what's interesting, there has been uh, excavations and they have discovered seals from Gedaliah, uh, who was actually a governor in that region at the time of the exile uh, in the area around Lachish. So there is like historical archaeological evidence for what the Bible is telling us here. Uh, because Gedaliah was overseeing this area sort of on behalf of the Babylonians. Um, and he tells the people like, hey, gather up the grapes, make new wine, uh, harvest the crops, like basically get on with your lives. We're going to figure out how to live here. So I think after these chapters today, I think there's a pretty practical um, application, which has to do with Jeremiah and his his character and what he stood for. So I think a lot in our own lives today, um, it's very possible, and I know that we have seen this in our own lives, where God is speaking something to you on behalf of his will and what he requires and wants for your life. Um, and it seems crazy. And then when it actually all comes to fruition, when it all happens, it feels like really, um, it's like relieving almost. Like, okay, God did do this. He did see us through this time. Uh, but also knowing that, like, the the journey after is not always easy. And I think we can all relate to this, too, like, in just, like, coming to know the Lord and, like, accepting him in our lives. There's this point of, like, okay, I, like, God did this, and I knew he would do this for me, and, like, he met me here where I'm at. But I think the point after, like, like the steps after that, the steps that Jeremiah took after Babylon f- came and Jerusalem fell— those are the true steps in our lives and in the life of Jeremiah that like those are a true test to like trusting that God's going to continue to do what he said. Um, even if, you know, the people in chains around you are looking at you and giving you the stink eye and and, you know, treating you poorly, like you, your trust in the Lord still needs to remain strong and you need to trust that he has what is best for you, for the people around you, whatever that might be in your life. Uh, I, I found an interesting thing that actually connects with exactly what you're saying. Cause I, I see Jeremiah as like this bold, mm-hmm. faithful guy. That's just, okay. I heard from the Lord. I'm going to do what he says. If you look at chapter 39, verse 17, the Lord is speaking to Jeremiah he says, but I will deliver you on that day declares the Lord. And you shall not be given into the hand of the men of whom you are afraid mm-hmm. for. I will surely save you and you shall not fall by the sword but you shall have your life as a prize of war because you have put your trust in me, declares the Lord. I circled that as soon as we read it. It was like, of whom you are afraid. Yeah. So Jeremiah is a real person. Like he's not this, I mean, imaginary. he's man. not imaginary. Yeah. He has real emotions. I have not thought of Jeremiah of being afraid. And here you have God kind of coming out of nowhere and being like, Jeremiah, I see you. I know you're afraid of these people. And so that's interesting. Like, even though he was dealing with significant fear, he had to step out on faith and be obedient to God. So he is a real person. He has real emotions. He's not immune from the fear that comes with crazy decisions. And God is with him and God is like delivering him. Uh, I think recently about like Jenny and I have talked a lot about like the the job that I was in recently. And we just felt so strongly that it was time to go, that it was time to leave. Um, and <laughs> I know financial advisors will not tell you this is smart, but I <laughs> chose to leave before I had another job. Um, and there's there's like a whole story with this. But like a couple months before, I had felt so strongly, like I heard the Lord say to me, like, it's time to go. And I was like, nope, not going to do that. I have four kids, God, like, that's crazy. Um, but <laughs> we were eventually reluctantly obedient. Um, I think God put other things in place that helped us make that decision and kind of pushed us the right direction. But God has been so faithful to us uh, in that transition. I'm I'm not talking to you guys about something that happened like 15 years ago. Like we're, we're living this now. Mm -hmm. Um, Just thinking of God's faithfulness, um, how we're seeing different pieces fall together that we never would have thought or dreamed could have fallen together. uh, All because God is caring for us and leading us and protecting us. And so I think, just an encouragement to you guys. I know sometimes we don't talk about what's actually happening in Jenny and I's own lives, um, but this is true to us. Like when you are faithful to the Lord, when you're obedient to his call, yeah, you might drag your feet a little bit. Like we definitely drag our feet quite a bit, 
Mm-hmm. Um, when you are obedient, he is faithful to you. And it is pretty cool to watch him uh, provide for you. Uh, I think we could, we could make a list. We probably should make a list of really interesting ways the mm-hmm. Lord has provided for us in the last two or three months um, where things came together that were like significant concerns for us and all of a sudden weren't concerns at all because God and provided them. Something that's important too is that after specifically after that situation and other situations similar to it, there is definitely like weird fallout feelings of like regret or remorse or was that even what we were supposed to do? And that I think is the part I was talking about is like remain faithful. If the Lord is speaking to you through his word and like through like your prayer life and what like revealing to you what he's up to in your life, like you have to remain faithful yeah. because the jump feels like crazy. It, it's scary. And then it's like, oh my word, you just feel completely isolated and alone. But um, remembering that what you're hearing from the Lord is grounded in his word and like is grounded in what other people are saying to you through his word. Um, because remember, we don't want to be making scenarios up don't in our head either. Up. Yep. Don't make um, it up. But it is, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy what will happen if you remain faithful after the faithful jump. Be be encouraged by Jeremiah. I mean, like literally he was spending recently he's been spending all his time in those courtyards with all those royal officials. If every They're time I was gone. gonna say something about the Lord or what he said and I knew I was gonna get either punched in the face <laughs> or thrown into a big sister and I would probably not keep faithful. I'm serious. But now he's in a situation where he's he's part of the remnant and mm-hmm. all those people who had been persecuting him and calling him a liar and calling him a spy, like they're all gone. Yeah. And it's that crazy. is, I mean, I'm sure it has second thoughts. I'm sure it has regrets. I'm sure it has fear and concerns all for Jeremiah. Like that is why, <laughs> that's why I'm encouraged by the weird verse that says he's afraid. Um, <laughs> he's a real person. He has yeah. the same emotions and feelings you do. And God delivered him and cared for him. And God will do the same thing for you because God has promised to do that. So we'll be back again tomorrow. We'll see you then. Thanks so much for listening to God's Plan, Your Part. If anything stuck out to you, if you have any questions, or if you'd like to receive a Bible, you can email us at godsplanyourpart at gmail.com. Also, if you're enjoying the podcast, please consider supporting us through the link in our description. We love that you're on this journey with us, and we hope you have a great day. See you tomorrow.